Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into a day three update here, March Madness. We do have teams advancing on the Sweet 16. North Carolina beating Michigan State. Uh, let me turn this down really quickly. I, this game, Michigan State was, was up. Uh, North Carolina went on a bit of a run. Let me see if I can look at the... Yeah, look at this. I really thought Michigan State, honestly, when you looked at the way this game was developing... Based on the fact that they were only four or five point underdogs, normally when that happens in a 1v9, a 1v8 matchup, the underdog wins outright, at least in the last seven matchups. I think it happened six times, and the seventh time that the underdog covered, they didn't win. But North Carolina ends up winning there. I'll say this again I really hate that it doesn't just stay in order of when the game started, because obviously this Arizona Dayton game started first. These teams playing at 10 45 a.m. What are we doing in Salt Lake City? It's crazy. 12.45 Eastern time with Arizona easily dispatching of Dayton. So guys, here's the deal with my bracket. I'm going to go to my bracket, but I want people to understand my final four is locked and loaded. I'm very confident I'm going to finish extremely high, possibly the 99 percentile when I get three, maybe all four of the final four teams right. Arizona being one of them, they look phenomenal right now. They easily beat Dayton. Even with Dayton going on a 10-0 run to end the first half, which is normally a very hard thing to overcome because a team goes on a 10-0 run, there's really no response. You go to you go to the locker room, but Arizona wins that game by 10 points. We expected it. Dayton really shouldn't have been there. It should have been Nevada. Iowa State beats Washington State. Washington State was up early. Iowa State ends up winning relatively easily 67 to 56 Tennessee beats Texas in a very low scoring game I don't know what happened to Texas this tournament in terms of both of their games being ridiculously low scoring Texas scoring 19 first half points and I do think this was one of the games I was watching and concerned about Tennessee they end up not covering the six and a half but they win and that's all that matters and Tennessee is my other two seed I have into the final four I will say you look at Purdue the way they handled Grambling, I know they're a 16 seed, but maybe a little bit concerned about Purdue beating Tennessee. Either way, I do like Tennessee right now as a two seed to make the Final Four. Illinois beats Duquesne. That's the Duquesne team we expected to see. 50 to 26 in the first half. You gotta love it if you are the Fighting Illini. You know, facing a team like Duquesne, nothing against them, but very easy win. Would have been a lot tougher of a game if it was BYU, but BYU easily lost to Duquesne. Let's not act like that was a close game. Creighton beats out Oregon. Very tough for me. I did have the 11 seed Oregon Ducks as an upset potential into the Sweet 16, but Creighton gets it done in double overtime, 86-73. to 73. Really good fight from Oregon. It's unfortunate. Gonzaga crushes t Kansas in the second half. I think everyone expected this. A lot of people thought Kansas shouldn't have even moved on. The Sanford win. They were mostly in control of that game, but Sanford made a crazy second half comeback. The block that was called a foul. You know, Kansas was dealing with injuries. They were always a paper tiger going into this tournament, and people knew it. And that's why a lot of people thought they were going to lose in round one. They probably should have. Uh, but Gonzaga... Nice run from them. I mean, 89 points, beating Kansas, outscoring them by 22 points in the second half. And then NC State defeats Oakland, the game going to overtime. Would have been nice to see Oakland go on a pretty crazy Cinderella. I'm going to look at Oakland's region to see if they possibly could have won the next game and gone to the Elite Eight. But Oakland did have the qualities of a crazy, like I don't know about Final Four, but we've seen these teams, FAU, Loyola, Chicago, who knows, Oakland has a 14 seed catching lightning in a bottle. But NC State, the 11 seed, gets the job done. And then I am going to quickly do a preview on these Sunday games. It's the exact same type schedule. You do have Marquette and Colorado Kicking it off, Colorado, a lot of upside. We'll see if Marquette can hang on there. The number two seed, Colorado sitting as a 10 seed. Utah State, Purdue, Purdue minus 11 and a half. You would expect Purdue to win that game. James Madison and Duke should be a fun game. Duke sitting minus seven and a half. Clemson and Baylor, Baylor minus four and a half. I do like Baylor. Bama and Grand Canyon, Grand Canyon coming off that commanding upset win. They are plus five and a half against an Alabama team. We know it's going to be high scoring. The total is 168 and a half. 
Northwestern and UConn. Pretty crazy line for a round of 32 men's game. UConn minus 13 and a half. I do have UConn into my final four, so very happy about this. U, uh, excuse me, Houston, who just throttled Longwood. They are nine and a half point favorites over AM. AM did have an extremely impressive offensive performance against Nebraska, but I do not think Houston's going to have any problems. And then the 940 game, the irrelevant game, Yale, the 13 seed, taking on San Diego State. I could see Yale winning that game outright. The total just sitting at 129 and a half, and a, half a 940 Eastern start time on a Sunday night. What an irrelevant game that is, uh, which is kind of sad. You would think Yale, you know, the the game that I would put in that region, I know they kind of have to put a game at 940 in Spokane. I don't know, maybe uh, Alabama Grand Canyon is a better matchup, I'll be honest. Is there another game there? No, there is not. So that is it. When it comes to, I guess this was perfect brackets. Yeah, so guys, people always asking me, is there ever going to be a perfect bracket? It's just, it's so impossible. I mean, unless somebody makes it there like the only way I could see a per well actually I can't even see it that like the only way I could see a, a perfect bracket happening is if you programmed a bot and had all these different Google accounts and c could create you know maybe over 2,000 different possibilities but even then it's just because of the way the tournament works if you get one little thing wrong it's over so like maybe someone ends up creating a bot and you're able to get into all these different Google accounts and you can create 25 different brackets, you know, 80 different times, but I, I just don't know. And then the women's, there are a lot of perfect remaining brackets, obviously. It's a lot more chalky. I don't even think they're onto their round of 32 yet. I'm guess I believe that starts today, so it's, it's more understandable. I don't know, maybe there'll be a women's, although honestly, well, there are, there could be. I mean, it's just so chalky with that region. And when it comes to uh, when it comes to my personal bracket, listen, guys, you're gonna see you're gonna say, oh, 37 percentile. The bottom line is, if you have a decent amount of your elite eight teams and all of your final four teams, I'm gonna make up all of these points. Even the people in first place, they've only got 50 more points than me or whatever it is they're at, or maybe they've got more than that. But guys, the point is, look, you look at my final four. Houston over Tennessee, the team that I'm really concerned about in Houston, well, maybe Creighton. I really would have liked to have seen Oregon beat Creighton, so Tennessee would not have to face Creighton, but it could be a tough road for Tennessee if they have to face a three seed and then a one seed. That's going to be a tough game for Purdue. Gonzaga, that's actually a good region, man. Gonzaga's looked good. We could get a Tennessee versus Gonzaga final there. Arizona possibly facing, I think, well, I would want Baylor to face Arizona, well, no, Cre excuse me, Clemson to face Arizona, that's who I would want, just because I want Arizona, obviously, to go very deep, I think Clemson's an easier matchup, North Carolina is possibly going to be facing Alabama, and then it's going to be North, I mean, this is really chalky, I'm not going to lie, all the one seeds still remaining, all the two seeds still remaining, Got, got me a little bit nervous for, like, Houston. Maybe Marquette loses. I, we're going to have to see a two-seed lose today. Uh, UConn over Illinois. So I did have Illinois and UConn. Uh, and UConn, they've got an easy run at this point. They're 13-point favorites, and then they possibly get Yale or San Diego State where they're going to be 10-point favorites. And then I'm guessing I could use Illinois to win this game. It, it, could, it could be another 1v2, though. And then Houston versus a and I would like to see James Madison. I am a little bit concerned about Duke beating Houston. But if James Madison wins, it's it, it's going to be a laugher for Houston. They're going to walk their way to the Elite Eight. I do think Marquette is going to lose. Th this region is wide open for Houston. Because look, Colorado's only plus 3.5, plus 4.5. Marquette loses. It's a 10 v 11. As long as Houston... You know, maybe Duke loses to James Madison. You Houston's really only going to have to get past in this region, Duke. Really, that's it. Because I don't see Marquette making it. And then they make the Final Four. And I believe that's... So yeah, I mean, it's been very chalky for sure. I do think we're going to get a two-seed losing today. I do not think Houston is going to lose to a and What are the other matchups? I don't even... 
The other matchups are Purdue versus Utah State. I don't see Purdue losing. I don't see Houston losing. I could see Duke losing to James Madison, but I don't love it. But again, when it comes to something like this, it's important to look at the total. And even and even in my group, even in, even in my group, when you look at this, the people in first place, you know, they're 120 points in front of me. It's not, you, you look at the multiplier in the final four, it's so much more. So it really, it, it, it this is, it's not cope. It's not cope because I've had this happen to me before where, yeah, maybe your bracket doesn't start off great, but all of my final four teams look amazing right now. Maybe outside of Tennessee. UConn looks like they're going to walk their way to the Final Four. Now, it's going to be very important in terms of my bracket that we do get Arizona beating UConn. If that happens, my bracket goes from like the 83rd percentile to the 97th because everyone has UConn winning the national title. Imagine Arizona beats UConn. I get double bonus because people aren't getting points from UConn going to the title. And then Houston over Tennessee... Maybe there's some concern about Gonzaga, about Purdue, even a team like Creighton. I mean, that is a it, it's turned into a tough region just because it's a two v three, and Gonzaga is obviously better than Kansas, who was a four, and then also Purdue, who looked pretty good against Grambling. But when it comes to this type of stuff, uh, and it comes to these games, I guess I'll just rapid fire. I think Colorado wins, Purdue wins. I'll go. I do think Duke probably wins, but I'll go with James Madison, Baylor, Alabama. I do like Alabama to make the Sweet 16. UConn, Houston, and I'll go I'll go San Diego State there at the bottom. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this update. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.